It's about to go down with Mark and Kathy, a live coaching show about dropping ideas. Mark and Kathy coach and have conversations with brilliant idea creators who are reimagining the world through the expression of their words, thoughts, and action. Hey, everybody. I am Kathy Armias. And I am Mark Williams. Welcome to It's About to Go Down. And welcome to a very, I want to call it a special episode, but everything is a special episode. But this one is especially quick. And why do I say that? Because we are joined tonight by the fastest rugby player on the planet. Why is he the fastest? Because he set his mind to this goal. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's About to Go Down. Welcome to this awesome, fastest rugby player in the world, Mr. Carlin Isles. And he is going to talk to us tonight about this idea about how we need to understand and direct our emotions. Carlin, what's going on, brother? How you feeling? Feeling good, my man. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. It's always awesome talking to you, man. And, 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 and we're right off the bat, just started off. Why do we need to understand and direct our emotions? And how is that tied in to being an elite person like the one you are? Because the emotion is our driving ship to why, is our driving ship, along with our belief system. And when we don't have our emotions in check or understand our emotions, it can lead us to different paths, good paths, bad paths. It can derail, it can, it can, it can tamper with a lot of things. And we can find antidotes to our emotions in the wrong things as well. And it's vital to understand the emotion along with getting the emotional message. But what does it mean and what do I actually need in order to be able to either stay put, starve the emotion, or redirect it in a way that's beneficial. Now, it's a lot of trial and error, but it's vital because there's consequences to, to the action. Not always bad, but good as well. But one, to understand the emotion and know how to see things outside in are the ones who are gonna be successful, are the ones who's gonna limit um, mistakes, and you learn from mistakes, but sometimes mistakes that you can't recover from. And it's important to what you feed and what you give that emotion um, because it's learning for something. It needs something. And sometimes people don't starve it and they give it to the wrong people. They substitute it for the wrong things. And those wrong things can hinder you in a lot of, in a lot of ways. So understanding things from, a, from different complexes and, and really being in tune with yourself and understanding what does this actually mean is, is vital. It's, it's vital to anything that you either want to accomplish in your life, to people you want in your life, to, to understanding what you actually need um, to be able to feel and be better. And without those understandings, of those emotions, um, you can you can be in bad. Well, you can instill bad habits and coping mechanisms. You know, so. Hmm. Got it, Carlin. I'm I'm curious to I'm curious to find out like how did you kind of figure this out for yourself? Like, <laughs> what's your story with this? So my story with this is. Um, I'm a I'm a deep person, so I always like to understand what does emotion mean. What does this mean? But then also understand other people's situations and how can I not be? How can not how can? Okay, I do not like, for an example, to be caught off guard or to be hurt or to to put myself in a bind where now it's hard for me to 
deal with the situation or my heart is broken or X, Y, and Z. So mm-hmm. why do people do what they do? Understand why people do what they do. When well, you're going to understand why people do what they do and which is, which is a lot to it, um, you, you got a blueprint. Nothing is all about a blueprint to how to move. I want to move how I want to move in this world and not be and, and not be caught off guard or deal with X, Y, and Z because I was unaware or I didn't have control or I didn't understand. So for me, I knew the importance and I know the importance of one, understanding self, but also understanding how can I be the best man that I can be, whether it's even towards people, not leading people on, not not um not. when you under my things when you understand self you understand how to cater to your needs everyone mm-hmm. else's needs and um not do things because you're so you you need you need it like this emotion is so strong i need to feel i need to do this i need to do this and you just gravitate to people and you end up hurting them at the end or you're hurting yourself. So to me, it's just the importance of how to, how to be a better human being. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Kathy, I, I, I love your question and I'd love to just dig a little bit deeper on that question. Cause Carl, and I introduced you as the fastest rugby player in the world, right? Yeah. You ran track, you played football. Um, you decided to stick with rugby. How does, just to help everybody understand this on an even deeper level, how did understanding your emotions, how did directing your emotions, how did feeding and sometimes starving your emotions help you to achieve this goal of becoming the fastest rugby player in the world and being as successful as you have been in the sport of rugby? Yeah, it's, it's one understanding um, your part one, your purpose. Two, what is it, you know, I've I've come from, you know, I was in the foster care system growing up. So that was already tough. Thank God I got adopted. And the things that I endured and went through, especially at a young age where a lot of kids, you know, homeless shelters, um, sleeping in cars, um, eating dog food, um, abusive foster homes, Growing up, and also when I was younger, I had I struggled in school. So a lot of emotions come with you know what you endure as a young kid. So as a man, I knew what I wanted to be and what I didn't want to be. And there's a lot of emotions that came with those things mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to know who I was and going along with my strengths and weaknesses. And I knew that I wanted to be, I didn't want to be another statistic. I wanted to be, you know, in the Olympics. I wanted to be a professional athlete. Um, I wanted to get my degree. And there's a lot of things that hindered me from the beginning, tried to hinder me because my cards weren't dealt typical. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I instilled good habits when I was young. And I molded myself to do regardless of how I felt. And I've learned from people who, and I, I remember when I was young, I used to cut, cut out clippings of articles of athletes who, who had a gift and a talent, but they made bad mistakes. And I put myself and I clipped those out and I said, I'll never be like that. So I was proactive instead of reactive. And I started to understand why they did, why, 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 why did they do that? And my thing was, I was going to alleviate those loopholes from happening. So for me, as I got older and I progressed, there was positions where my dream and goals was never going to happen. But I saw past what the eye could see. And I, and I was alone a lot, but I also understood where I wanted to be. And I understood what it was going to take, regardless of what the outside looked like or what the picture in front of me looked like. Because I saw past what the eye could see. So that and understanding that, hey, emotions, ups and downs. You know, you're gonna feel like this never's gonna happen. Um, You feel sad, you feel angry, and you feel lost. But 
I kept my actions, I kept, I kept them moving forward, regardless of my circumstances and where I was at. And I understood the emotion and I understood the fight and I understood the capacity of how do I, even though I feel this way, one, I have to do regardless of how I feel because I know what's at stake if I quit. I, it was, and it's easy to, to stop at a rest point and then ponder because sometimes people stop at a rest point and they ponder and they never get up mm. or they let their mind dictate based off of the circumstances and say, hey, I'm just going to settle or there's no way this is going to happen. But I directed my mind based off of a vision that I saw and I knew in my heart, regardless of what my circumstances are, that they're gonna happen. I became a two-time Olympian, fastest welcome player in the world. And for most people, based off of what I was dealt with, would have never kept going with. Mm. And being broke, dealing with this, dealing with that, I got my degree, everything that I wanted to do and spoke came true based off of a belief and what I felt like God, God's purpose and plan for me. But there was so many, there was a long point where that was never going, looked like it was never going to happen at all. So I've seen it. I've been through it and I saw things so so many different perspectives where I, I, for me, I, I know what it takes, you know, and I know what it looks like and I know what multiple perspectives look like. And I know where life and emotions and things can derail you if you're not in tune and, and if you don't know how to direct. Hmm. Wow. I, Carlin, wow. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for pushing a little bit further so we could really understand kind of a little bit more of the backstory. Carlin, I feel like you're a master of like, there's levels in there that I heard. Yeah. And I, I heard, I heard so many, right? So the first level, I, I feel like when you're talking about like, you have to be able to direct your emotions and you have to starve them if and when needed. And, but I feel like your first thing that you said though, is really even actually just being aware being like, I clearly want to get out of this situation. I want to do this. I, I, I'm going to do this. And if there's anything that's telling me I can't, or I won't, I got to starve that. Cause it, cause if not, I'll be attracted to it. Right. If, if I'm yeah. repeat, if I'm repeating this right, the, the same way. So Mark, I think it, you know, it's really cool. Like, you know, we're both speaker coaches. So we're listening to you, Car you know, Carlin, and we're like, we're like, okay, how would you, how would you teach this to somebody else? Right. That's our brain. Our brain's like going, how do you teach this to somebody else? I feel like a lot of people do um, engage in emotional, like they, just emotional reactions to things and they let emotions derail them super easy. So more than, I think what you're trying to teach people is understand how all the emotions work with each other and when it can benefit you and when it can't. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I, that's kind of how I'm seeing it, Mark. You know what I mean? Like there's a big pot of emotions and even some emotions can be both good and bad, right? right? They can be good and bad. It's like, a, right. Like they always say like a pencil, a pencil can, can be good. You can write, or you could poke somebody's eye out with it. Like it can be good and bad. Um, so if you were giving a Ted talk tomorrow, Carlin, I feel like a broken record. I feel like I always ask people this. Cause I'm always like, okay, let's get <laughs> like, if you were giving a Ted talk tomorrow, like what would you want to teach like what would be the outcome of what you would want to teach people what would you want to tell them how, I want could, to, they, how could they do what you did basically you know how they can do what I, what I do via whatever you're teaching them yeah one I would say understand the push and pull mm -hmm. push and pull correct mm -hmm. and a lot of people to the pool are strong enough no, the push is strong enough. They never let go of the pool. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be that way. So you also got to understand the motion behind both. And they both want to keep you safe. Mm, they mm. both want you to progress. 
both of them don't want you to get hurt, right? The fear, the fear. But sometimes you got to learn how to talk to the one that's pulling you and say, you had your time in place, but I'm okay. Yeah. I don't need you mm-hmm. any longer. Sometimes we let things inspire, keep running. Mm. Mm. And mm. you got to understand the objective. The thing is the objective, regardless of the emotional state and what's happening, the objective have to be in the forefront because as long as the objective in the forefront and not the solely the issues and the emotion, you'll keep on, you'll keep on going forward and, oh, and, and, and to, your, to your way of your, of your destiny. Now, if the emotion is in the forefront and the objective is behind you, wherever the motion go based off of that day, you're gonna go left, right, forward, back, and you lose sight of why. Mm-hmm. And that's why, the objective, why. Now for me, I understood why. I, my, I, I knew my objective and where I wanted to be. And so my thing is categorizing and, and, Getting people to understand, take one, what is it that I really want? Mm -hmm. And if I do X, Y, and Z, is that going to hurt me in the long run? Mm -hmm. And if I don't do it, what's at stake? Mm -hmm. And what's at stake if I don't continue to progress forward? One, is it going to cause me financial trouble? Two, am I going to be able to live with this for the rest of my life if this doesn't come true? Because ultimately, what you wait or don't do, you're going to have to face that person in the mirror every single day. And this is my thing was, I never wanted to be like, I should have been here and live with that for the rest of my life. The thing is, you're going to have to answer and live what you didn't do because you were scared to or you made the wrong decisions. You're going to have to live that for the rest of your life. Mm. And that when I look myself in the mirror or whoever's in front of me or not in front of me, but whoever listens to this, got to realize that when you look yourself in the mirror and your life and you look at it from maybe your 80s, 60s, 50s, whatever it is, could you live with yourself? Are you going to have regrets? Are you going to say, I wish I would have did this? I'm not where I'm supposed to be because I let this get my way. I let that happen to me. Um, I, I gave up too soon. Or, a answer, or, or an answer that you may not have known because you just stopped. Or you let your mind or life or you made up these scenarios to keep you safe. But you never, you never would have known what the outcome could have been if you just would have did it. Mm. Because this is what happens. We don't live in the present sometimes because we're too busy worried about the fear of something not working. Yeah. Yes. Yep, that is so true. <laughs> sometimes we straddle between the past and the and, and the and you know the past and the future. We're worried about we think we're going to repeat this or we're worried about things that might, that might, that we think might hinder our future because of things that have happened in the past. And we're never like in this space. I totally get that. Or, or, or this is going to happen, but you, you don't know until you do it. Yeah. You have a scenario that hasn't happened yet. Or because this happened in the past that you bring in that to the future or to the present, like that's going to happen again. Right. Right. And that can stop anybody from losing weight from 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 going out and doing a different job because the job they have now it's familiar it's it's comfortable but it's not what they need to be yeah so Mark, because they, oh. they they don't want either they left a job in the past before and it didn't work out so now you think that if you lose if you if you go and do this that it's not going to work out but you don't know that yeah mm-hmm. I, I, Mark, I love something that Carlin said that I would love to see what you thought about it and what, what we could mess around in this space with. But he said, emotions can't be in front of the objective. They have to be behind it. And I love that. Yeah. It's because then he said, if the emotion's in front of it, it's, 
it's guiding where you're going to go, not the objective. So it's like, you have to be clear on the objective, which he clearly talked about. And then you have to put the correct emotions behind that. And that makes so much sense to me, like thinking about the order of it, because yeah. if the emotions in the front, the emotions going to take you everywhere. Fear yeah. is going to come up and then, and then this sadness or something, if something didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, or like a hundred emotions will come up in front of the objective. But when you put the objective first, yeah. I just, yeah. I love that. I, I, and I love the idea of that. I love the idea of even as a part of your talk, ultimately getting people to think about the objective because I could see myself being your audience and thinking about that objective. And yeah. then the part where I get really intrigued is now you've gotten to the emotions and you, yeah. and you said that I've got to put the right emotions behind it. Right. Correct. And, and that's where I get curious about, well, what's a right emotion? You know, how do you figure out what's a right emotion? Um, and, and, and when we say right emotion, do we mean like, listen, anger is not necessarily a, a wrong emotion. Correct. It be a right emotion in a particular case. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd be curious about what are some examples when anger was the right emotion behind the objective, you know, what were some of the, what were some of the examples when I don't even know how, how could confusion, confusion or <laughs> be the right emotion behind. Um, but I think coming up with, with a number of examples to show that, because that's, that's where I would be very curious um, sitting in your audience about those right emotions. Because like you said, if you don't figure out the right emotions to put behind the objective, you can end up, you know, falling off the trail, right? Yeah. And the, the greatest, I would say, behind that is continue to walk forward. And that's the action. Mm. Then you to put in the effort on whatever you're dealing with or whatever your objective is, continue to do what's necessary to get there regardless of the emotion. Mm -hmm. Because emotions fickle, they're not credible, correct? Mm -hmm. So you'll continue to do and then what you felt that day, tomorrow or the next week, you won't feel that way no more, correct? Mm -hmm. So when I was getting my degree and they told me it was gonna take me three to four years to get it. I knew that I, I, there, I knew that that's not that's not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wait that long. I, I just can't. I know I'm not gonna finish it. So I said, "What's the fastest way I can do it?" And I had to do something so hard in order to finish that. And I finished in ten months. Hmm. The degree take me three to four years. I got my bachelor's in 10 months and I said, and, and, and I remember my, my, my suit, my, um, my academic advisor, she, she couldn't believe what I, I told her. I said, I'm going to finish this in 10 months. She gave me a plan. All I needed was a chance for it, for the reality, for it to come true. And we sat down and I said, okay, listen, I took, I was doing Olympics, I was taking, I finished like 10, 10 classes, all my free lectures and lectures, like no, 12, 16 or 12. And I'm up at three o'clock in the morning at the Olympics and I'm typing away, doing papers, da -da -da, layerways, whatever it is, layovers, typing away. And I was taking my last course, I took like six classes and I was writing I had, to, I had 12 assignments I was finishing in eight weeks, hmm. six every week typing. And many times I was like, F this. I can wait till December, November. No, I waited out. It was so many emotions. I'm done. I was about to be done. Nah, hmm. blah, blah. I, I almost was trying to rationalize with myself that it's okay. Mm -hmm. However, I knew that what was at stake if I didn't finish. I knew that I had a lot going on for what I was going to do after if I was done. 
how is going to is if I don't finish or I wait it out, then I'm the opportunities for myself to present myself and look for this and try this was going to be slim. It was a push and pull. But I had to continue to walk regardless of how I was feeling. So the objective was in the forefront and my emotions were driving me all over the place, were trying to drive me all over the place, but I got a grasp, a hold of them and I reeled them in and I made them walk with me instead of them walking me. Mm -hmm. And when I made them walk with me, the ones that was, that the, the ones that are, are, that were doubting or the ones that were stressing me, they started to side away. The ones that was overwhelming or causing me this or making me feel this way, they started to wither away because they no longer were in control. I was in control. I just had to keep bringing them along with me. And then they just started to drop as I just kept building, as I kept, as I kept my actions, kept walking. And yeah, they come and yeah, you feel them. It's not like you don't feel them, but yeah, I understand you. And yeah, I feel this at this moment of time, but guess what? I'm gonna have to keep my backpack on and I have to keep coming forward and forward and forward. And then they stop weighing me down. And when I obtained my objective, the bigger picture, the bigger emotion, the whole, I did it was bigger in all the negatives and all the other emotions that were trying to weigh me down. Now I knew what they were trying to do. I knew why it was there because what stress you're dealing with this, you're dealing with that. And sometimes you got to realize that what you're feeling is maybe not just towards what, what you're trying to do, but maybe it's outside stuff that's you carrying with you that you're not, you're not compartmentalizing and you're not dealing with. Now it's about, okay, my objective, but now also the, the branches along with that, that's life, relationships, this, that, worries, the future. Now it's about if I don't know how those things are affecting the ultimate goal, mm -hmm. then what you're doing is adding everything on top of the objective. And what you're doing is something that's or a goal that's maybe not the, or the feelings, all the feelings that's coming towards it. Okay, let me put it like this. There's so many things outside of a goal, a big goal of yours. There's life, relationships, doubts, X, Y, and Z, right? There's all those branches outside of it. So say if you got a road or you got this, you got this road, right? And then you got the branches outside of it or the roads, outside, the, say branches outside of it. Now let's use a, no, let's lose a tree. So you got the tree, right? And then you got the head of the tree and then you got the branches on the side. And there's a pathway, the, the branch, the, the tree is opened. And that tree, that direct line to, to the objective of the head of the um, tree, it's, 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 it's flowers, it's beautiful, right? It's, 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 the, it's the main thing. But sometimes we have, or we take everything that's happening, the side branches of life, and we bring that to the middle and we carry that. And we add so much more stress, so much, so much of what other outside things are coming and it can stop us. It can weigh us even that much more heavier to get into to the main point, that straight line. Got it. And without realizing that, hey, this is one of my goals, right? I want to be an Olympian. However, I'm dealing with, you know, not unfinished school. I'm dealing with relationship stuff. I'm dealing with financial stuff. Instead of saying, you know what? I'm going to take care of those, all those side branches, all those side branches I'm going to deal with. Because if I don't deal with it, it's going to make the path that I'm going to be an Olympian that much more harder um, because I'm not taking care of it. I'm, 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 and I'm making everything into one and it's not that one. It's not that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it can feel that way and it can feel more overwhelming 
and exhausting because you're trying to understand it all, but you're, you're making it one as you carry on straight. But it's not that way. It's understanding each, each branch and where they're at and still walking, but not letting it affect you fully because you understand that, hey, this is where, this is what's happening, why it's happening. But I know that when I, when I get to the final destination, it's gonna take care of all of that. Or I'm gonna take care of what I need to or what I can at these points, you know? Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. It, you know, Carlin, you have so many metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I love that. I love that. Yeah, and you me too. You have so much passion, right, for this. You know, Kathy, as, as, as the expert TED coach on the show, on the planet. Um, Ooh, you know on the I, planet. You know, love it. You know, you, know, <laughs> you know what I wonder with, with, with everything that he's sharing, and you sometimes ask about how to get this started, right? And I'm just... I'm seeing Carla, I'm seeing you before you even you get on the TED stage, I'm seeing you pulling your daughter into the room and yeah. teaching her this life lesson. And I'm just wondering as you sit her down, what's the first thing that you say to her to set up this whole conversation about setting goals um, and being in control of your emotions? What's, what's either the question you ask or the story you tell? What's that one thing to get her interested? Wait, Mark, are we playing a game? Because I, <laughs> if we're playing a game, I think it's Carlin. Sometimes we play a game, right? Where all three of us will answer this. Because I have one that I wrote down that I would love that to. That sounds see. like a game. I'm a path of baton to you first, Kathy. And then Carlin, I would love, I think you would sit her down. If I saw you talking to your daughter, I think you would tell her this, deal with your emotions or they will deal with you. I Ooh. feel like. I, I feel like in that space, that would be like the opening line because everything that you said really goes back to that. Yeah. Like if you don't deal with them, they're going to deal you like, so deal with your emotions or they'll deal with you. That's my line. That I would be. That. Line. <laughs> I love it. You just dropped the mic on that one, Kathy. All right. You want oh, you went, you went. I, I, I don't even know how to follow that act. No, well, I just, it's just a thought. Like what I, you know, maybe we could all come up with a line. Cause I think it's, I, you know, I heard him say, I was listening to all the analogies and metaphors. And then I was like, what would be the fastest way to shortcut what he's saying? Because at the end of the day, if you were giving a talk or if you want to introduce this idea to people, Carlin, you have to get people, you have to get it it has to go out of your court as quickly as possible, right? You gotta be like, hey, I did this thing. This is awesome. This is kind of how I dealt with it, but here's how you could use it. And I imagine you saying something like in that vein, telling people that immediately. And you're like, okay, here's the thing. Deal with your emotions or they're gonna deal with you. And here, here's the thing. If I really just simplify it, everybody in the audience right now, think of something that you really wanna do. And you may, maybe that thing is something you never thought you, you, you just thought, oh, I've forgotten about it. Cause I don't think I could do it. Or it's just so big or grandiose of a thing. You just, you feel like it's impossible. Let's play with that thing for one second, whatever that thing is, what are the emotions you're putting in front of it? Cause I love this in front of thing. Right. And then you tell them, oh, and then people can go, oh, like, and then give them examples. Like, is it fear? Is it, is it like, uh, yeah. what's the, what's the word maybe for stalling, like you just, you feel stuck. Do you feel fearful? Do you feel uh, frozen? Do you feel timid? Is it timid? Yeah. Like, and so all these things, and then you're like, what would happen if we move those emotions behind it and put how, how different would you act if the objective was first? I'm just piecing back all the things that you said to me, I'm piecing it back to you. Right. Cause then you would tell them, so whatever that thing is, take all those emotions that were in front, move them behind, put the objective first, and then use the emotions that that would be appropriate to move because you kept saying that. Then what emotions would you use? Oh, well, then I would use um, I, then I would use like maybe aggressiveness, not in a bad way, but right, like I would be aggressive in my goals. I would I would not be timid. I would be very bold. I would be very um, curious. I would be very inquisitive, or I don't know. So anyway, that's how Mark. That's how I see him. Like using it to teach people immediately i like that and then getting them to say to see put themselves in that position 
hey, when your emotions in the front and the objection in the back and that fear is in the front, how do you feel? Mm-hmm. First, it, keep the objective in the front. And then the emotion that goes along with that objective, how do you feel when you put the right emotion along with that? Right. And that and then feel more of it. How does it look? How does, how does your life look when you want it to go your way? or your dreams, your goals, and those emotions that align with it. What does that look like? You know, what does that feel like? Mm. Because you create that. You just got to do it. Yeah. When you yeah. do that, you'll change your state of mind. Yeah. Changing that state of mind. And looking at things from a different perspective. Not looking at things from the same movie. That mean, not, not the same, but people, like I said before, indulge in emotion but not get the message. But they look at things. And they get the same feeling because they keep looking at them the same lens. Change that. You know, I I I, I have this image, um, and I I see the the manifestation uh, on an image of of whatever this goal is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then popping up all around it, all of these different emotions that we yeah. tend to feel when we're dealing with something. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's like all of these images of all of these, you know, feelings almost overcrowd and overwhelm the image because they take over, right? They become the front of the picture. And that whole image of then wiping everything away and putting it behind it. And I'm going to piggyback off something you said, Kathy, that you made me think of. Now you put the emotions behind it. And now you almost strategically prioritize those emotions, yep. right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. that you know which one to use when to achieve that objective. So yeah. I just put that whole visual in my head and I wouldn't even know how to put that visual together, but that's the visual I see in my head manifest, that's manifesting your idea. Yeah, I think too, like he said, uh, he just said like, okay, I wrote this down based off of something you just said, Carlin. I was like, changing your state of mind is becoming objective oriented, not emotionally driven or not driven by emotions. And because what you're saying is like, once you get yourself straight and you have the objective orienting, orienting, I, okay, okay, I'm not gonna say it. thank you. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that right. O- orienting you in the right direction, then, you know, you're not being driven, you're not being pulled, like you said, the push and pull thing, you're not being pulled by the yeah. wrong emotion. Um, yeah, I just, I love, I love the analogy. I just, I like, I fell in love with it. I don't think people get that. You, it was such a brilliant thing that you said that when the emotions come first, they're going to then pull. If they come behind, they're pushing, right? So if the goal, if the, if this is the goal and the, the right emotions are behind it, they're going to push, they're going to push the goal in the right direction. But if they're in the front, oh, they're going, oh yeah, they're hey. fucking going. They're freaking going everywhere, right? <laughs> That's the thing though, right? That's the visual. Because then if they're in the front, they're they're like a wild horse that you just like opened up the, you know, you opened up the stable and the horse is like, woo, I'm going, like, I'm gonna go everywhere. And and you're like, no, you want you want the horses to be behind pushing the thing that should be driving. So I totally get that. That like blew my mind. I was like, That's a great, I love that. Yeah. And I think yeah. I think. Oh, I just want to say, and that story of you in the Olympics studying. Yes, I know. I was like, that's that's the story. Yeah. That's the story that's got to be in the TED talk. Yep, that, because because people are like, oh, people work their entire life to go to the Olympics, and ninety nine percent of people never make it to the Olympics. Like even people, I'm so many people, so many people's dreams to go to the Olympics never came to fruition. Here's a guy who that should be the end goal. That's not his end goal. He's sitting at the Olympics doing, <laughs> doing homework. I was dying. I was dying on that too. And I was like, wow, that's a guy who's driven by a goal and not by an emotion. Because yes. even the Olympics didn't stop. Even the Olympics didn't stop him from getting to that goal. Because I've 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 seen many people stop what they're doing. External to school, they stop. And they wait. And it's because the Olympics is the biggest platform in the world. Yeah. They, they stop everything 
to obtain that. They will stop, when I say literally everything, but you don't have to. Mm-hmm. Even as the big set, you don't have to. You don't have to stop your other goals and your other dreams from, from, from happening because you know the Olympics is the biggest, that's anybody's biggest stage, but life doesn't stop just because it's, it's, it's because of something. You don't have to, de- you don't have to deter things or not deter, but you don't have to put off what you're doing. And my thing was, I was at the Olympics. I was three o'clock in the morning doing this, doing that. And I still performed well because they let other fear of if I focus on this, I'm focused on that. If I'm doing that, I won't do well at the Olympics. And I don't want that fear or that chance of me not doing something or me doing something stop me from doing well at the Olympics. But I kicked butt. I still was the top. I still was the best. And I still was, one, doing school work, two, waking up at five, doing extra stuff before my even teammates was even at the training center. I'm doing extra stuff. Most people are like, why are you doing it? You're going to get hurt, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't worried about the fear of something else happening. Because I knew that my, my, I knew my objective of school. I knew my objective of still working hard regardless of what everybody else was doing, I had many objectives and I catered to all of those instead of putting off all of it because of f- fear or doubt or, or circumstances that haven't even happened. Um, wow. Wow. I, I love this so much. I love where it's heading because I, at first when I was listening to Carlin, I was like, wow, I'm, 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 I'm tracking you, but yeah. like, there's a lot of, like you, like, like Mark said, you have a lot of analogies and a lot of stuff. And, and I feel like we're starting to help create a, a, a shortcut to get people there quicker, to get people to understand, yeah. to understand very quickly what you're talking about and how they could use it. And I just, I just about died when I heard the, behind, I was like, I never really thought about that, but if you, you know, the whole behind thing and yeah. it just go in every analogy that you've ever made, everyone that you keep saying i'm like nope 100 now i can see it if the emotion yeah. was in the front uh, the motion of fear was in the front you're like oh i'm not gonna be i can't do anything but be at the olympics oh i can't train extra because i'm gonna get hurt the fear would be running wild with with yeah. you know and it would be pulling the objective with it as opposed to you're like no the objective's out in the front i still got to do this schooling i said 10 months that's what i'm doing the olympics yeah. just happen to be now and that's what i'm yeah, right like <laughs> Hey. And so I'm going to put it behind and then it's going to push me and it pushed you in two ways, right? Because then you yeah. push the fear out. And so then you, it's like you're accomplishing double because you weren't, you weren't letting it. Yeah. There you, see it. there you go. I've, I accomplished, like you said, double instead of just one. I, I obtained all of what I wanted to do instead of let yes, you spot yeah. on. Spot yeah. So this is why we have these conversations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is why we have these conversations. But like, Mark, don't you? So don't you think like, can you imagine him? And I, I do love your observation about the, I, I love your observation about the Olympic story because, I, I mean, as Carlin just described, like, people would be freaking out, thinking, "What? You're at the Olympics and you're not worried about Olympic things? <laughs> like, you're yeah. not? Yeah, you're not trying to go to sleep early and you're not trying yeah. to like, you know." Um, and so this vision of him being like, no, I'm, I'm pushing my objectives and I'm using all these emotions to, to push. And what I ended up getting from it was a kick, butt, you know, outcome at the Olympics and then a kick, butt. I came back and kick, butt at school. So I faster love it. than they ever thought I would. Yeah. Faster. Exactly. Exactly. But, wow. um, Mark, I'm curious, like, you know, we always talk about it in a TED talk space, right? Like he's going to give this talk and stuff. How, I I mean, you were alluding to it before. What would be the next thing that we add to the story? Like how could people, how do people do it? Easier said than done. Carlin, you're badassery all the way, like hundred percent. I could see how, I can see your entire life, like going a certain way because of how you are. How do we get the normal person to how do we get the normal person to first buy into the concept and then go, yeah, I need, to, I, this is what I need to do? Well, I, I, I think part of that answer came earlier. Like, you know, Kathy, you and I always talk about all the notes that we take. And 
Carmen, here's what I heard earlier in terms of how do you put this all into practice? And it was understanding your purpose. It was understanding who you are. It's instilling good habits. By the way, I love the example of clipping out articles oh. of athletes oh. <laughs> who did things that got that de de that derailed them and deciding that's not what I'm going to do. Love that. And the then motivational you know, posters. Right? <laughs> that was awesome. And then the next step was keep your actions moving forward and then understanding your emotions. Those were five critical parts that I thought fall under that umbrella of understanding and directing and of making sure that your objectives are in front of your emotions. Oh, Mark, I, you know, oh my God, I love that so much. Even the part that you called out that he was taking the demotivational things, right? Things that should, and be like, nope, definitely not doing that. Definitely not doing that. I, I think that people sometimes put things into a category of positive and negative. And Carlin was able to use negative for positive. A double negative makes a positive sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's like he took a negative thing and said, I'm going to use that negative thing and make a positive out of it by using it as kind of a warning. That is brilliant. And it's counterintuitive to, I think, what anybody would think. Because yes. people expect you to say, oh, just do push yourself, do it like all the kind of cliche things. And you're saying, Hey, I have the system, find your purpose. Some of the things that Mark said, right. Find your purpose, fix your habits, get your emotions yeah. out of the front, get them behind, yeah. get the objective in there. And then here's a bonus y'all look at everything that could possibly go wrong that everybody else did. And don't do that. <laughs> yes. I don't know. That's kind of, I love that Mark. Then it's almost like you have a system then, Carlin. You have this like yes. this system that you could teach people. Yes. Well, and that's why I love it because if you start off with deal with your emotions or your emotions will deal with you, right? And getting into many of your stories, but again, love the story about you studying for your degree while at the Olympics. And then getting into this whole concept of emotions sometimes come before the objective, but it's got to be the other way around. You've got to line them up and make them work for you. And then outlining that process that you followed. Yeah. The only thing, Kathy, that I think is missing is how does he cap it off? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's true. Well, let's play a game. What would be the, you know, okay. I, I, the, this let's play a game thing is just uh, me always trying to say like, hey, let's take three scenarios. So, okay, here's here's a scenario. That's the TED talk, right? We You kind of have the opening line of like, you know, deal with your emotions, they'll, they'll deal with you. You have the system of like the five points um, or whatever they end up being. How would you close it? What's the last thing that you want to say, Carlin? What's the last thing you would say on this stage? I would say... Paint your picture how you want to paint it and don't let life paint it for you. Oh, I love the call back to the, oh, <laughs> like you said, Mark, that's a mic drop. What are you going to say after that? <laughs> you were so visual, my friend. You were so visual. I think yeah. that, I, I love the way you said that line. I love that too. I love it too. Cause if, if in our scenario that we just talked about, it would be, a reframing of the opening line, which is the uh, like deal with your emotions or that your emotions yeah. deal with do. Yep. And then you close, you get to this end and you talk about this whole thing. And you basically, now you've kind of painted an entire picture for somebody in scenario, including some of the stories that we talked about. Um, and then at the end, you're like, paint your picture or your picture is going to paint you. Ooh. And you, and I could see you even closing. I'll take it a little step. I'm just going to take it a little further, Mark. I'll add to that. Because I could see you saying something like this, Carlin, because if your picture ends up painting you, there's going to be a moment in your life and it may be 10 years from now, maybe 20 years from now, maybe 60 years from now, that you are going to look back at that picture and you're going to know that all the wrong colors, all the wrong landscape were put into place because you didn't take care of it when you should have, right? Yes, exactly. 
right? Like something for exactly. like show something a little bit and make that analogy deeper. Because when I think about a painting, when somebody paints it, they're adding layers. There's a color in the background and then there's another color over it. And then there's trees and then there's this and there's that. But you don't want your picture to be almost painted. And then you go, yes. wrong picture. That's, that's, not, that's not the life I wanted. That's not the picture I wanted to paint. And he, but here and here I am like, Ooh, cause then that stings that I don't know, Mark, what do you think? Your, your turn. I, I got all kinds of things in my head. People painting pictures, calling <laughs> painting pictures. I gotta, I gotta share this one trivial note. Um, Halsey. I don't know if you listen to Halsey, Noah Halsey, but I saw Halsey perform on Saturday night live. Mm. And while she's singing the song, she is on the floor painting and she paints a portrait while she is singing this wow. song. It wow. was one of the most amazing things that I've seen, right? And this whole metaphor of painting and then thinking about, and I love the way that you added it on there at the end, you could paint this whole picture, let those emotions drive you. And then look at that picture 10, 15 years down the line and realize, man, I could have painted a masterpiece. Right. This, but you then you realize that this wasn't my painting. It's just life's painting. Yeah. Painted it for me. Yeah. I love that. I love that visual. I love that visual. And I'm just telling you, again, I, I, I don't know how to create the visual. That's not my technical expertise. But whatever you have going on visually behind you, yeah. as you give this TED talk, could be so, so memorable and unforgettable. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that, Mark. I, you know, usually we're not at this point in time, we're talking about the idea and we're not usually talking about things that might support that. But mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. I can, I can see a visual where there's all these emotions that come in front. Cause you know, the opening line, obviously that we came up with is kind of like deal with your emotions or, or they'll deal with you. And so you have all these emotions that could put a stop um to your painting that you're ultimately going to get to at the end but i love that and, I think and, and those emotions are almost like paint blotches yeah different yeah. colors be a bunch of, oh that's cool. there's a crap ton of words that describes emotions yeah you're pissing in all these emotions that's clouding the the picture yep yeah yeah yep i like that i like that carlin and it won't make sense until the whole talk is done either right like some yeah. of the things are like they're almost like little, they're almost like little foreshadowing of what, what is yeah. going to come in, into the talk a little bit more. Well, I don't, this is probably a good place to, to wrap because we came, like, we got through a lot and Carlin, I guess I would ask you, yeah, I guess I would ask you, like, since we started talking, like what, how has, how has, how's this whole idea changed for you? And what are you excited about? Like, what are you excited walking away from this conversation with? Um, I'm excited about a lot walking away from this conversation. Um, made things a little more clear, put things in more, a better perspective. Um, had me even thinking. Um, I even thought about more stuff while we even talking. So that I expressed to you guys. So I'm just excited to see where it goes and what comes of it. So I feel like it's um, something that will be beneficial um, to a lot of people um, because a lot of people don't see that or think like that and it's 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 a tool it's an antidote that can help people in the long run even in the short run so i'm excited to to give some people something a little a little different you know mm. i'm so excited for you to get this out here and i loved your you called it an emotional antidote i still love that as a description and you could tell people, you know, I have the, the emotional antidote that can fix your life. It could maybe be the title, right? Yes. And yes. That could, right, that, right, Mark, that could be the title. And then people are like, what does that even mean? Which antidote is that? And then they'll get it as soon as you start talking. So that's kind of the hook for the title. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited that we did kind of help this conversation kind of help shortcut it because I think the clearer and faster you can get to people with the, the concept yeah. the more powerful it's going to be and the more people it will affect. Carlin, if people wanted to find out about you, the fastest rugby player in the world and the planet and the universe, uh, where should, where can they find you? Um, 
on Instagram, Carlin Isles, um, Twitter, I think it's the same thing, Carlin underscore Isles. And then I have a Facebook page, it's just Carlin Isles fan page. Um, so type of my name, C-A-R-L-I-N space Isles, I-S-L-E-S, and I'll be there. Ooh, Carlin Isles everywhere. Love it. Well, Carlin, <laughs> it has been amazing talking to you. Uh, I am really impressed with how you have used emotions to push you, get behind you and push you into the great things that you've done in your life. And it will be really cool to see how you continue to do it. So thanks for Thank being you. on our show. Anybody watching, if you want to be on our show and you want to have this idea conversation with Mark and I, we're always around. We have a website. It's called it's about to go down show.com. Uh, tap in, you know, reach out to us and tell us what you think for your idea. Or if you know somebody that you're like, you need to talk to Mark and Kathy, let us know who that is as well. Um, Carlin loved having you on Mark love having the show with you. You know, every time I feel like we do this. So this time Carlin, it went down and, and, and until next time it's about to go down y'all. 